Hey, I'm Jonathan, and this is Redhead. In front of you is a set of pendulums in an array that is usually referred to as a pendulum wave, or in its more appropriate name, a pendulum snake. I first saw this demonstration in my university's physics department. Since then, I've seen it in science museums, and it's also pretty popular here on YouTube. Whenever I stumbled upon it, I never quite understood what I was seeing exactly, and I was mostly curious about the specific shape of the pendulum holder, this top part here, which basically makes the whole demonstration tick. So I've built my own. In this video, I'll try to explain some of the physics behind this demonstration, and of course find the thing that interested me the most, the exact curve of the pendulum holder. If you want to see how I built this, I have a video of the build process, you can find the link in the description. In order to fully understand what we're seeing here, let's remind ourselves the basic properties of a simple pendulum that consists only of a weight connected to a pivot using a string. For small oscillations, the force acting on the weight is directly proportional to its displacement. This is why we get an harmonic motion, which means that the motion of the weight is not just periodic, but follows a specific curve called a sine function. In a future video, I'll get into why this is only an approximation and we'll see how to build a pendulum that produces a pure harmonic motion, regardless of the amplitude of the oscillations. For a simple pendulum, the period, which is the time it takes for the weight to return to its initial state, is fully determined by the length of the string and the gravitational force, and is given by 2 pi times the square root of L divided by G. Since pi is constant and g is somewhat constant, we get that the period is basically proportional to the square root of L. Surprisingly, this quantity does not at all depend on the mass of the weight and more importantly, the amplitude of the oscillations. This means that when the pendulum is slowly coming to a stop due to friction, the period stays the same, making it ideal for keeping time. In this demonstration, we're using a set of pendulums with precisely tuned periods to create some pretty cool patterns. The pendulums are adjusted so that they all return together to the initial state after 20 seconds. The length of the longest pendulum was set so it will make exactly 22 oscillations in that period of time. The next pendulum was shortened in precisely the right amount to do exactly 23 oscillations in that same time. The rest of the pendulums were shortened in the same manner up until the ninth and shortest pendulum that will make 30 oscillations. Now comes the part that I was most curious about. By how much did we have to shorten each pendulum? Let's find the function that represents the curve drawn by the tops of the pendulums. What is L as a function of n? As we've seen before, the period of a simple pendulum is proportional to the square root of its length. For the general case, in which the first pendulum is doing p oscillations in a given time, the second pendulum should perform p plus 1 oscillations. If we continue this, we'll get that the nth pendulum should perform p plus n minus 1 oscillations. Let's use cn to mark how much we had to shorten the nth pendulum so that its length is given by cn times the length of the first pendulum, L1. Now, the period of the nth pendulum is proportional to the square root of cn times L1. Let's look at the ratio between the periods of the nth pendulum and the first pendulum. This lets us find cn. Plugging it back into the equation for the pendulum length, we get that the length of the nth pendulum should be L1 times p squared over p plus n minus 1 squared. As it turns out, this curve is Drum roll, please. 1 over a parabola. While this might not be the most important result in physics, I still find it satisfying to know the mathematical representation of everyday objects. Needless to say, I consider this an everyday object. In this particular demonstration, p is 22 and the length of the first pendulum is pretty close to 0.2 meters. In order to fine tune the length of every pendulum, I came up with this simple mechanism. The bolts push down on the strings for precise control over the string's length. But you might wonder why I went through all this trouble for the ability to slightly change the length of the string. The answer lies in the relation between the period and the string's length, which by now we all remember that it's basically a square root function. In our case, the argument inside the square root is very small, so we're in a zone where every slight change to L is amplified and leads to a large change in T. There's a different approach for explaining the patterns in this demonstration. Let's see what happens when we only move two out of the nine pendulums. For every four oscillations of the longer pendulum, the shorter one is doing exactly five oscillations and they align. The oscillations of these two weights goes from being totally in sync to being totally out of sync, and everything in between. This periodic phenomena is usually called beating. 
Beating patterns come up whenever we are dealing with sums of harmonic functions. We can look at the patterns and the periodicity of our demonstration as a sort of beating pattern of nine harmonics. It's also very important to mention that even though this demonstration is usually called a pendulum wave, there are absolutely no waves here. Each pendulum is independent and is not coupled to any other pendulum, which is crucial for obtaining waves. What we see are purely mathematical patterns, reproduced by the unique physical properties of the simple pendulum. I personally prefer the name Pendulum Snake, which does not suggest there is any relation to a different physical phenomenon. We could have thought of different ways of tuning our pendulums, and we would have got slightly different patterns. On my website you can play with an interactive animation and test different pendulum arrangements. So if you're interested in the build process of this demonstration, I've made a separate build video, you should definitely check it out. For those of you who wish to build this themselves, I have plans and templates on my website. And for those interested in buying something like this, I'll have links to similar products in the description. If you want to support me and help me produce more videos like this, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Until next time, bye!